Honestly, Stay and Scream might be the most confusing part of Halloween Horror Nights. But it's a game changer. Halloween Horror Nights 2024 will be here before you know it. This year it runs from August 30th all the way until November 3rd. And we wanted to make sure that you make the most of every night of Halloween Horror Nights. So today we're going to talk all about Stay and Scream. What the heck is it? Do you actually need it? And if you're gonna use it, how do you get in? First and foremost, Halloween Horror Nights is a separately ticketed event. This means that one way or another, you're gonna have to buy a ticket if you wanna go to HHN. I know we sounded like a broken record, but we wanna make sure you understand you need a separate ticket. If you want to learn more about Halloween Horror Nights ticketing, we do have a video all about admission. We'll link it below, check it out after this video. On top of being a separately ticketed event, Universal goes one step further in ensuring that everyone still in the parks has a Halloween Horror Nights ticket. How do they do this? Universal actually shuts down the park and files everyone out. Everyone except those who are already in a stay and scream location. This leads us to what is stay and scream? Stay and scream is basically a holding area for you to hang out in before the park officially opens for that HHN evening at 6.30. In years past, there have been five different Stay and Scream locations. Now they haven't been confirmed for 2024, but we suspect that they'll probably, they'll be, probably be the same. The past Stay and Scream locations have been Today Cafe, New York or Finnegan's section, San Francisco or Richterberger, Central Park or the Simpsons area, and Soundstage 18's Courtyard. Now all of these Stay and Scream areas have their pros and cons, and we will get to the pros and cons of each of these Stay and Scream areas later on in the video. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about what the point of using Stay and Scream really is in the first place. Why would you even need to be in the parks ahead of time? Stay and Scream will essentially be early park admission for Halloween Horror Nights. Mm -hmm. Stay and Scream easily gives you a head start on the night to houses before the main gate of HHN opens at 6.30 p.m. As we mentioned earlier, Universal Studios will shut down at 5 p.m. If you're not in a stay and scream area by 5 p.m. Even if you have an HHN ticket, you will get shuttled out of the park and you will have to re-enter with all the general HHN admission. And I can promise you by that time, the line to get into the main gate for HHN is long, 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 long. I've been at the back of it. It takes a while to get in. Stay and scream locations usually start officially around 4 p.m. However, we've seen the informal line for stay and scream start between 3 and 3.30. Think of when people were lining up for Stranger Things last year. That, that zone, line got long. Yes, it, it, they couldn't file people in fast enough. People start lining up for houses in Stay and Scream very early. early yeah. We've seen houses open around 5.15 mm -hmm. at the earliest. Sometimes it's a little later, depending on how long it takes that section of the park to get closed out. But you can pretty much guarantee if you're in Stay and Scream, you are hitting houses before everyone else. Now understand that not all Stay and Scream locations will open up at the same time, right. as well as not all houses, even if you're in the same Stay and Scream area, mm -hmm. will open up at the same time. They kind of stagger things to really make sure people are getting spread out, the houses are getting funneled through appropriately, and well, they're being strategic about how they're using their space. <laughs> We've been able to knock out four houses by just utilizing Stay and Scream mm -hmm. prior to that 6.30 general park admission. I'm sure by now you're like, man, Stay and Scream sounds amazing. Why wouldn't I do it? The next question is how do you get into Stay and Scream? What voodoo magic do I need to be able to utilize this special, special place? The first way that you can get into a Stay and Scream area is by having both daytime park admission but also a corresponding Halloween Horror Nights ticket for that evening. For daytime park admission, we're talking a single day park ticket for Universal Studios or your annual pass. And that's for all types of annual passes from the premiere to the seasonal to even the military pass. You just need to have a pass to be able to access the park for the day. And then you got to have an HHN ticket for that night of HHN. The second way that you can get into Stay and Scream 
If you don't have that daytime park ticket or the annual pass is you can purchase a scream early ticket and of course have an HHN ticket for the corresponding night. Your scream early ticket will get you into Universal Studios at 3 p.m. Now scream early tickets have not been released for the 2024 season, but last year, 2023, they were $40 a ticket. To get in the stay in scream, that's really what you need. You need to be able to access Universal Studios by about 3 to 4 p.m., get into the park, whether using your Scream Early ticket or your daytime park admission. And then from there, to be able to get in a sand scream, you need that HHN ticket that is valid for that evening. Pretty simple once you break it down, but it sounds complicated. Be aware, once you're in your stay and scream area, you're stuck there. You're not leaving. So go to your stay and scream area prepared. Mm -hmm. Have some water, some mm -hmm. cold water preferably, because it's gonna be hot. Have some snacks. Snacks are always tend good. To get hungry. And try and find some shade or some AC because a yeah. lot of these stay and scream areas, that is prime real estate. Sometimes you'll queue up for a house and you'll be hanging out in the sun and well, it gets pretty hot. So go in prepared. If you hang out till the end of this video, we do have some pro tips to help you have the best stay and, stay and scream experience possible. So what stay and scream should you go to? If you wanna see the opening ceremonies your best bet is to be at Today Cafe. We did the Today Cafe on night one of Halloween Horror Nights last year. And as luck would have it, as it does on most night ones of HHN, it rained and the opening ceremonies were canceled. So we just kind of hung out in the rain. <laughs> it wasn't uh, the best stay and scream, but it was only because we were really truly there for the opening ceremonies and we didn't get to watch it. So. If that is your jam, like that is so great. Use Today Cafe so you can experience the entirety that is the opening ceremonies. Now Today Cafe will not open up to any houses. No. So if your goal is to knock out as many houses as you can prior to HHN General Park admission, this is not the stay and scream for you. No. If you wanna hit up houses that are in the back of the park, then look at staying in the Central Park slash Simpsons stay and scream. This stay and scream typically opens up to houses over by like the Kids Zone Pizza mm -hmm. Company or um, ET Adventure as they file you back. We don't know exactly how people will be filing to houses this year and it might have switched up just based off of where house locations are. However, this location will get you closest to some of those tent houses in the back of the park when it opens. Be prepared though, because this stay and scream area does not have a lot of shade. I stayed yeah. in this stay and scream area for over an hour and was absolutely fried by the time I got released to houses. Alternatively, we have seen that this stay and scream location, when it's rain, they have moved people over into like the animal actors section, but I don't think that's always a guarantee. And so it can be a very hot, and also sometimes a very wet stay and scream location, depending on your weather experience that night. If you wanna knock out as many houses as you can mm -hmm. prior to HHN general park admission, New York is our recommendation yes. for you. This section allows you to hit up a number of houses towards the Jimmy Fallon section mm -hmm. of the park. I'm sure Ben will put it on a map here and show you guys kind of where those are located, but it will open up to a number of houses and you can hit those up once you finish them. Then, pro tip, head to the very back of the park because you'll be able to finish two, three houses in that area before the front gates typically even open. When the front gates open, people like to rush to those mm -hmm. houses that you just finished. And so you already have a head start and you can go to the back of the park before anyone else gets there. Finnegan's will be open in the New York Stay and Scream area. However, it is very, very popular. So yeah. finding some real estate in Finnegan's is a uphill battle. And finally, if your goal at HHN is to go and duel with some Death Eaters right away before anyone else can, then we recommend hanging out in either the New York or the San Francisco Stay and Scream areas. The San Francisco area is great because mm -hmm. you can hang out in Richter Burger and get a snack, have some AC, get off your feet a little bit until you start either one, queuing up for the house Yes. that releases from San Francisco or make your way back, like Aubrey said, to Diagon Alley. And finally, if you've made it this far in the video, we do have some additional pro tips, which I know we've been peppering in, but we've got more for you. Pro tip number one, if you have Express Pass for Halloween Horror Nights, we 
don't usually recommend utilizing it if you are in a stay and scream era. Usually the wait time is short enough that you don't need to use that express pass during the stay and scream time. Unless you're trying to get all 10 houses done, which we've done before, using your express pass during that head start you're getting typically is just kind of a waste. So don't burn the express pass right away. Go enjoy the houses before those main gates open. And then once the main gates open and the flood of people come in, then tap into using that express pass and go do those houses again with it. As we mentioned earlier, pro tip number two is to bring water and snacks. Food opportunities as well as drinks are going to be limited, so be sure that you show up to your stay and scream location duly prepared for a wait. It's not usual where the food stands will open right away during stay scream. Every once in a while they do, but it's not always a guarantee. Sometimes they're still work on getting set up for the evening. So banking on that you're gonna be able to enjoy a twisted tater while you wait in the New York section, I wouldn't do it. Not a guarantee. Bring snacks, bring water, lots of water. And pro tip number three is to be prepared for the Florida sun. Yes. Whether that's an umbrella because it does rain mm -hmm. during Halloween Horror Nights, but it also will provide you a little bit of shade if you're waiting, especially in that Central Park stay and stream location. We also highly, highly, highly recommend sunscreen because walking, walking around with sunburn is just uncomfortable. If you have any questions about stay and scream, be sure to throw them in the comments and we will answer them as soon as we can. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about Halloween Horror Nights, ticketing, pro tips, packing lists, and more, we've got those videos for you. Check them out somewhere around here. Here. I don't know where you normally put them, but they'll be on the screen and listed below. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.